Adobe just released an incredible new AI-based noise reduction tool for Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw called Denoise. In this tutorial, you'll learn how it can be used to improve nearly any image, including those shot with a small sensor like a drone, those shot at a noisy ISO 6400, or even cleaner ISO 100 images intended for print. Let's start by focusing on this drone image. If we go to the Develop module, we'll see that it was shot at ISO 100, and yet if we zoom into 400%, you can see it's a very, very noisy image because drones use small sensors, and small sensors are always very noisy. So we want to reduce that noise, and we can do that by going to the Detail tab. Down at the bottom under Manual Noise Reduction are the old legacy options that work the same way they always have. So just like in the past, I can push up the Luminance Noise Reduction until I find that sweet spot where I've reduced the noise I'm concerned about and preserved as much detail as possible. And I think from before to after, it's definitely an improvement in the image overall, but with some trade-offs in detail and not full removal of the noise here. So I think better is certainly possible, and I think we'll find that with the new tool. If we turn this off, let's instead focus on this new tool here. This Denoise button is the new artificial intelligence-based approach. Just click on it, and we get this new Enhanced Preview dialog. And here's a preview of what it's going to do for our image. If you click, you can see before and let go to see after and you can move around. And what I see here are absolutely some of the best noise reduction results I have ever seen. If you don't see a profound difference from before to after, that's probably because of resizing or compression of the video on YouTube. But on my screen, the differences here are just absolutely stunning. The only choice we need to make with this is the amount of denoise. So if you find that you want to preserve a little more detail, you can slide the denoise amount down to try and keep more detail, but I don't think it helps here. Or if there's too much noise, you can go push that up higher and get more aggressive denoising, but I don't think that's necessary here either. Most images, and certainly this one, I think you just go to the default 50, leave it there, and you get great results. You'll see there are a couple of options in the background that are grayed out. If we turn off the denoise, they become available. So we've got the raw details and super resolution. And the deal here is that if super resolution's on, you can't use denoise, and if denoise is on, you can't use super resolution. And anytime you use denoise, you have to use raw detail. So these are just chosen for you. There's really nothing to think about. The only thing I'll point out is that if you're familiar with the existing raw details, turning on denoise actually adds a little more detail. So if I bring the denoise all the way to 1% and turn denoise off and on, I'm actually seeing a little bit more detail in the image after turning on denoise because it's an AI-based approach and it can have somewhat unpredictable results. So just know that may be an option for you to improve detail, even if you don't need denoising. But like I said, I'm just going to stick with the default 50 for this image. The only other option we see here is this create stack. The reason for that is that all these enhanced tools, what they're going to do is create a new linear DNG file. So they take your original file with its mosaic raw data and outputs a new DNG file with linear data. And because it's a physically separate file, you might want for just housekeeping and organizational reasons to create a stack to put them together. I don't personally use stacks, so I'm gonna leave this off. The only other thing I'll note is that when you're moving around here, you can click to zoom back and then just click anywhere to zoom in. That's a quick way to move around. Or if you're in Adobe Camera Raw, you can actually click on the original image and the preview will move around. For some reason in Lightroom, maybe it's a bug, it doesn't move around in Lightroom, but it will in Adobe Camera Raw. So once you've made your choices here, just click on Enhance. You'll see a processing down here. You'll also see a progress indicator up top. And then when it's done, we're going to see the new version put down below here, which has been named as Enhanced NR for Noise Reduction. And if I command click on the original and hit C, we can compare them side by side. So I've got the original on the right with all of its noise and color problems. And on the left here is my improved Enhanced DNG, which I think looks better in every way across the image and matches the preview exactly. So probably every drone or small sensor image can benefit from this new AID noise. Let's now switch over and take a look at the other options here. So I've got an image for high ISO noise reduction problems, and I've got an image for low ISO. I've also got an iPhone image, and I just threw this in to show what happens when an image is not available. I'm going to process all three of these at the same time. We can batch the results. So I'm going to command click to select the other images. And in the develop module with all three of these selected, I can click on denoise and process them all at the same time. Now, whichever image is most selected below is the one I see in the preview here and here. And whatever choice I make for denoise here would get applied to all the images at the same time. So I'm just going to stick with the default 50. And then I can process them. And notice this says enhance two images because this third image, this iPhone image, is not applicable here. It's not that the algorithm can't work with iPhone, 
but this was shot using the Pro Raw format, which is not applicable, versus the Standard Raw, which will work with AI denoise. So let's go ahead and click to start the processing. We'll see the progress indicators again here and here. And I'll just quick speed up the video. And at the end here, you can see this warning that denoise was not applied to my iPhone image. Let's click OK, and I'll just show you one thing you can do to investigate these things. If we go to the library module, looking at the right under my metadata, you probably don't normally use it, but one of the options here is for DNG. If you select DNG, you get information about DNG files. And if I go click on one of my originals here, so with this original, you'll notice that it says mosaic data, yes, meaning that it is the original sensor data. But if I click on the iPhone image, it says mosaic data, no, because the iPhone has already demosaicked it in a pro raw file. It's an enhanced file from the iPhone, and we cannot do these enhancements on top of those enhancements. But like I said, if you shoot with the standard raw format on the iPhone using an app like Pro Camera, you can absolutely still use this on those images. I'm gonna quick stack these images for comparison in Photoshop, and I'll be right back. I've gone ahead and processed the same image multiple different ways and stacked the results here in Photoshop for comparison. On the bottom is the original with zero points of luminous noise reduction as a reference. Then above that, I've done the best I could with the legacy manual tools from Adobe, in this case, 50 points of luminous noise reduction I thought looked best. Then above that, I've used the new AI-based Adobe Denoise, and coincidentally, 50 also looked the best there. And then on top of that, I've got an alternative AI-based approach from DxO called Pure Raw 3. I've covered this in great detail in a previous video I'll have linked below, but I think it's very complementary to Adobe's approach, and I think they both have their strengths, which you'll see in just a moment. Let's hide these, zoom into 100%, and see how things compare here. So in the original, we're looking at an ISO 6400 image in a very deep shadow area that I've tried to lighten up. It's going to be extremely noisy, basically unusable. With some manual noise reduction, we get it to a point where it is principal, certainly on canvas, and I think there's a lot you could do with it here, but it still leaves a lot to be desired. It's very noisy and it's lacking detail. When we look at Adobe's AI Denoise, it's bringing out detail we couldn't see before. If we move this a little bit, you can see there's quite a bit of nice detail here. At the same time, there's areas that didn't get detail or that look kind of artifacted. So I think it has areas that looks better, areas where it looks worse. I think if we took this and simply dropped the opacity of this layer down to 50% and took the best of both, we get to a place where the, I think this looks better than just manual noise reduction, and yet it doesn't show off the artifacts. So even though this image is extremely difficult, I think the AI has added some nice value here. You just have to use it the right way, and blending it a bit with the alternative manual version is probably the best way to use the tool here. Let's go restore that and take a look now at DxO's approach, which I find does a better job with this foreground. It's not perfect. It still has some areas lacking detail, but I think there's fewer artifacts and I think it looks really nice. I would say it looks better than the Adobe approach in the foreground. At the same time, I would still probably take this and try and blend it a bit with the manual version, maybe having a little stronger strength in the opacity here, but just allowing a little bit of the original through to avoid the appearance of any artifact. Now, if we go and look at the sky though, I think the results are a bit different. If we move up in the sky and let me zoom in to 400% to make it easier to see in the stars here. As we look at the results here, in the original, it's obviously very noisy. With manual noise reduction, we get a pretty decent result. And if we were gonna stack multiple versions through Starry Landscape Stacker or something like that, we'd get to a very good result. When we compare the AI-based Adobe tool, it's done a great job of cleaning up artifacts in the background, of cleaning up noise in the background, but it's created a new problem. These minor stars are now too prominent. In the original, a lot of these stars are very faint and they don't compete with just the selected few brighter stars. I like having a few brighter stars and not having everything be bright and cluttered. So I'd like to see this a bit diminished and maybe we'll see that improved in a future version. For right now, I kind of prefer the old manual approach and I would just stack multiple versions of this, which I'll have linked in a video below. And if we compare it to the DxO AI based tool, it suffers from the same problem as Adobe's tool with an additional problem. So it also has minor stars which are too bright but it's also adding these little trails there's these little lines jagging around the image so i would say that overall adobe's done a better job in the stars and dxo has done a better job in these deep shadow areas in the foreground overall i find each of these approaches has merits and i would ultimately use a little bit of the original manual approach everywhere in the image i would use the adobe ai approach to help clean up some of the sky a bit and I would certainly use some of the DxO approach in the foreground. 
And when I compare this to other ISO 6400 images, I generally find these results hold true, that the stars are a bit of a challenge for both of the AIs and the foregrounds, I think probably do a little bit better in DxO. And again, this may change. DxO is on the third generation of its tool and the Adobe AI tool just came out. And certainly I would expect that it'll continue to improve over time. Let's now switch and look at an ISO 64 image. I think I'd call this 100 earlier, but it's 64. It's generally very clean. If we zoom into 100%, or let's go all the way to 400%, really look at the detail, make sure you can see it on YouTube. And I'm gonna turn on top here just a curve to help see this detail a little bit more clear. So in this original, there's certainly some noise here, but generally is a pretty clean result. Turning on 20 points of manual noise reduction in the Adobe tool cleans it up very nicely and looks very printable, very usable result here. With the new denoise tool from Adobe, we aren't necessarily removing more noise, but we're adding more detail. And if we wanted to, we could probably go in and increase the amount of either manual or automatic noise reduction further given we're extracting a little bit more detail. So this is definitely improving the image and I think would let me print it to a larger size. And then on top with the DxO Pure Raw 3 approach, I would say that it has a similar, maybe a little bit higher level of detail and it has more noise. It has not cleaned up the noise as much, but I could manually add some noise reduction in Adobe Camera Raw and clean that up. Overall, I think quite comparable to Adobe's approach Probably the most notable thing here is a slight color shift from sort of a cyan look in my original to a slightly magenta look after here, which would be easily correctable, but you should just be aware that sometimes these AI tools have a little bit of a color shift you need to correct. So even in its first release, I think this new AI-based denoise tool from Adobe is an absolute game changer. Now click to this next video to learn more about reducing noise in your images.